If you've only seen the Lord of the Rings movies, then you've missed out on some of the detail that was put into the books by Tolkien, especially the military strategy. Remember that Tolkien had been a fighter in World War I, and he had seen how silly it was to dig yourself into one spot and then have people just kind of pick each other off over time. He had seen how bloody that had gotten. And so he wrote better military strategy into his books, especially The Two Towers. So in the movie, The Two Towers, you saw that Theoden, king of the Rohirrim, took his people, moved them all to this fortress that was in the mountains called Helm's Deep. And he just kind of dug in there and waited for his enemy to come and attack. But that's not what happened in the book at all. In the book, the Urukai were coming from Saruman, but he took his warriors and used the advantage that they have on their horses. So greater mobility, uh, greater hit overall, just uh, more energy that they could, you know, kind of bring on the target. And it was something that it was an advantage that the Urukai didn't have. And so he actually took these folks and rode out onto the plains. And that's one of the things that they were known for. They are the horse lords in uh, this world. And so, yeah, he used this advantage to take out as many of these guys as possible until he realized that he was dealing with an overwhelming force and he had to take his folks and retreat everybody back into Helm's Deep. This is a military doctrine called forward defense. So we're gonna talk about some of the weapons that I have here in my house and some of the ways that I think about them. As we've gone through this six millimeter arc series, this has been in my mind the whole time. So we're gonna get down to this really important stuff only here at the very end. Now, if I wanted to defend my castle, if I wanted to defend where I am right now, be able to defend you know, within the boundaries of my house, there are a couple of really good options that I have. I can reach for a pistol, something that's gonna be very maneuverable. It's gonna be less punch than some of the other things that I have. So what I might reach for instead is this little guy right here. The AR pistol is just brilliant, I think, for these kind of close quarters. It's something that can be held very tightly to the body. It doesn't recoil much. It's very easy to get multiple shots on a target. And it just, it just sits really still. It has a lot of the good things of a rifle and a lot of the good things of a pistol. I can actually wield it like a pistol if I want to. It's small, light, maneuverable, and I'm not gonna bind up on corners as I'm moving around inside my house. So really great choice there. If I were a homesteader, if I have, you know, kind of more distance to deal with, I not only have to defend uh, inside my house, but maybe I need to get a little bit of an extended reach out there, then what I'm gonna be reaching for is the good old defensive carbine. So we're looking at a 16 inch barrel. I'm gonna get more velocity. It's going to probably have more stuff on it. I'm gonna feel free to put a low power variable optic or some other kind of scope on top, maybe a red dot. And this is something that's going to still be pretty maneuverable inside my house, but it's something that I can really kind of stretch out a little bit farther with if I have a threat that's a little bit farther out. And you know, even if I have varmints or something else coming around, I need to deal with maybe coyotes that are eating my chickens. Uh, yeah, this could be a really good option. And this is going to have an effective range. Okay, if we look at this one, this is gonna have a great uh, effective range from zero out to you know, like 50 yards easily, 100 yards. This is actually something that you can reasonably take a shot at 200 yards and be able to deal with a medium-sized target. And you can do all that offhand just because it is so stable. This one, you can really start to stretch out your hits based on whatever cartridge you have in here. This is probably gonna be 223 or 556. So this is gonna be stretching things out to 300 yards uh, pretty easily. And then if you are someone that has practiced with a good reticle, like we have in here, a good FFP reticle, uh, then you can make hits out at 600 yards. It's not gonna be the easiest to get on target at 600 yards. If the wind is high, you're gonna be probably shooting a few different rounds to try to get on target and when it arrives it's not going to hit with a whole lot of authority it's going to be effective um, if something is not armored but uh, yeah this is going to be lacking some of the uh, the punch that we're going to get from something like this this rifle I can stretch out uh, like a, a 1,000 yard shot is going to be easy with this 6.5 Creedmoor so we're getting into a 
bigger round, we're gonna have a lot more powder we're burning, a heavier bullet, much more ballistically efficient, and this is gonna really hit with some authority at some of these closer distances, and then as we stretch out, it's still gonna be very effective. So this is going to have enough punch to take out a deer at you know 700 yards if you need to, um, but this, as you can see, is going to have some liabilities to it. It's heavy, it's not maneuverable, and it's not gonna be fast. This is not gonna be quick between shots. This is something you're going to want to fire supported, and yeah, you're gonna want a, just a tripod, a bipod, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna lay down and uh, just use this in a different way than the others. So this has a great effect way down there, but as you get close, yeah, not so much. And that is why I've been kind of thinking about this for a good long time. What is gonna kind of fill that gap? What's something that's going to be really effective out to maybe 600 yards, a little further if I need to stretch it out that far, um, and something that's going to have a heavier hit than you're gonna get from 223, and that's one of the big reasons why I built this six millimeter arc carbine. Yes, I do intend to use this as a hunting rifle. And remember that there is a lot of crossover between tactical and hunting scenarios. Uh, a lot of the greatest snipers that we've had in our country started out being hunters. And they brought the information that they had gleaned from hunting, they actually brought it back. And in many cases, they were the instructors that taught people in the military how to use their weapons in the first place. And that's, you know, beyond using a weapon, it's, you know, how to sneak up on game, how to, uh, you know, be sneaky out in the field, how to observe, how to find good spots, how to stay hidden. And um, so, yeah, they, they were able to bring a lot of that back with them. So, yeah, this is going to be my hunter. I'm going to be able to use this for deer and hogs. And then if I needed something for that forward defense sort of use, that is one of the big purposes that I have for this. And I haven't really talked about that much in the video series so far. And by the way, if you want to check out the full video series, I'll link to it up here. Uh, this is my own uh, kind of custom creation. I'm really happy with it in a lot of ways. I do have one issue with it, and that's the barrel, but you can see that in the, uh, the series. I'm going to swap that out pretty soon. But I'm really happy with how this came out. Since I am dealing with uh, targets that are going to be a little bit on the longer side, and let's kind of switch tracks a little bit and talk about what forward defense looks like in the modern world. If I have this house that I want to defend, if I have this homestead, then there are a couple ways to defend uh, against you know, some kind of enemy that's heading my way. It could be that I hole up here in my little you know, bunker and I, I'm sitting right here on top of my treasures, my family, you know, I'm here to defend them, I'm here to defend property or whatever, and I can stay here and use this as my defensive area. But there's a problem with that. I am now immobile, I am stuck here, and my enemy is going to have whatever opportunity they want to come you know, from the outside. They can get resupply, they can move at will, they can choose whatever kind of firing angle they want on, on my position here, and I'm kind of helpless. Yes, I do have the advantage of knowing my terrain and you know, maybe I have some things figured out beforehand, but I think it's a pretty bad idea to be dealing with a known threat, a credible known threat, right here. If I know where this threat is coming from, then I can actually ride out, like the Rohirrim, I can go out and meet them where they are. I can use something that is mobile, something that is effective, something that has a longer reach and a heavier punch than the average carbine is going to get you. Yes, this is going to be something that would be very effective. A lot of us think of this as a defense of homeland uh, you know, not just defense of castle, but defense of homeland kind of weapon. And this would be very effective in a lot of situations, but this is going to be effective in more, especially if I can keep the weight down to roughly the same kind of weight that we have with this carbine. And currently that's the problem with this one, but I'm gonna fix that. 
So if I have a pretty good idea of an invading force that's on its way, and I have a pretty good idea of its direction, maybe its timing, I can go wait in an area that's more of a choke point, a place that I can control, rather than someplace like here that I really can't, where I have 360 degrees of I don't know what's going on. It might be better to go out and find a spot that's more under my control. So let's see how this weapon is going to be effective for that kind of situation. Uh, first off, this is going to be something that is going to have that heavier hit. Six millimeter arc is going to have quite a bit more energy on target. It's going to have more ballistically efficient projectiles than you're going to get with 223 Remington 556. There are some good ones for that if you load up some of your heavier bullets, but overall this is still quite a bit better. Those are going to be moving out very quickly. And in fact, since there is such a flexible range of projectiles that you can get in this, uh, you could have some really light, fast moving bullets that are really good at defeating body armor at closer distances. And then some of the longer, more ballistically efficient projectiles you can use at long distance are going to have enhanced barrier penetration as well, just because of their greater mass. So they'll be able to get through, you know, plywood and other things if you have an enemy that's trying to hide behind something that is concealment and not cover. This is going to be something that can really start to uh, kind of pinpoint different things get on target easily and this is one that's going to buck the wind really well if you have a 6.5 grendel a 308 a 6.5 creed more or a six millimeter arc like this one it's just plain easy to get on target it's going to have a relatively flat trajectory compared to 223 it's just going to fly through the air more easily you don't have to hold over as much your range is not going to be so tricky that you know it's it's difficult to get on target uh, and as the wind is picking up especially this one is going to fight it very well and you don't have to hold off all that much in order to make a proper hit when it comes time to take those tricky shots the reticle that i have in here and the way that this is set up overall is really going to do a great job if i use a range finder or the ranging part of the reticle in here to figure out how far away my target is then i can just hold off or hold over using the reticle very quickly and i don't even have to touch the turrets i can just keep my face inside the scope i can keep my hand on the rifle no messing around this can be extremely quick on targets that are at multiple distances that are at speed you can have moving targets you can have all kinds of things and this is going to be something that gets on target relatively easily uh, compared to that 223. Some other elements that will help to give me that edge. Um, you can see that I've got a sling attached, so it's gonna be able to take up some weight if I wanna get mobile and take off really quickly, move to a new spot. I'm gonna have a detachable bipod up on this end so that I don't have all that weight hanging off the end, especially since I will have a weight up here that's going to be one of the best weights that I can add. I'm gonna put a suppressor on, it's over here in the case. And um, yeah, this quiets this rifle down a whole lot. And what this does is it helps to mask my position. This is something that I've actually been able to test out uh, prairie dog shooting. If I have just an open rifle, it's going to make a great big pop. The animals are gonna be much more spooked and they're going to go down uh, more easily, especially as they are close to my area of operation. Uh, the closer they are to my rifle, the more quickly they're gonna take off. And so if I have a can on here, Yes, the animals hear the bullets going overhead and they might even see their buddies uh, exploding, but they are not going to really know what's going on. They don't know where the threat is coming from. And in a lot of cases, they just kind of keep walking around and doing their thing. So masking uh, the report of a rifle with something like that is very important. And if you want to check out what this actually sounds like at longer distances, I tested 223, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, uh, to hear what supersonics and subsonics sound like when they are suppressed. You can hear what all that sounds like downrange from the target's point of view if you click on this video up here. So yeah, I think that this fills that gap that I was thinking of uh, very neatly. This is going to be something that will work at kind of close range. I'm going to want to keep it, you know, probably about the closest would be 50 yards before I want to switch over to something like this. But then as those distances increase, this is going to be a monster. I'll be able to take shots out to a thousand yards with this if I've done my work. And I'm going to get out and practice with this to make sure that I know my ballistics and we'll see how that goes. 
What I've described today is not new. This is a designated marksman's rifle. You've heard this before. This is something that's designed to fill that gap between the kind of shorter distance carbines and the long distance sniper rifles. And it should be something that can get very precisely on target, especially at medium ranges, and deal with those threats that are just kind of falling in the gaps. Since this is in six millimeter arc, this is gonna be lighter weight. It's just gonna be easier to carry around, especially in the ammunition department, than 308 or 6.5 Creedmoor. And so I think you really should take a close look at 6.5 Grendel or six millimeter arc like this one. And there are a couple others that can kind of fill in those gaps. But those two I think are my favorite for this kind of purpose. Now naturally in Western countries like the USA, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, or New Zealand, we have no need for a weapon like this unless we have certain kinds of hunting we want to do like hog hunting. Our governments do a bang up job of protecting us from rioters, from terrorists, gang members, cartels. Uh, experimental scientists, and they do this all while maintaining their proper place and kind of keeping our God-given rights and not intruding on those at all. But if any of that were to change, I think it's going to be really handy to have a DMR around. Thanks a lot, you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We have more coming on this. We will talk a little bit about hand loading and how it goes with the new barrel. And um, yeah, just thanks to patrons of the Destructive Arts for making this possible. Consider the DMR. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.